Get your special horoscope for the year ahead 2020 at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of January 5th, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. And all of the attention and the glamour and the glitz is going to two big things. So one is the lunar eclipse. The other that has had the astrological world a buzz for years now is the meeting of Saturn and Pluto, the conjunction that is going to take place. It is going to be this week that I think we will feel the energy more strongly. It is early next week that technically Saturn and Pluto will perfect their connection. And I will be here to talk about it every step of the way. I've been talking about this. I spoke about it in the 2019 video, in the 2020 video. So I'll try to link uh, to some of those videos below. But this is something that a lot of people have been looking forward to. And it is an incredible phenomenon. These two planets, Saturn and Pluto, only get together about once every 40 years or so. So it is not a common occurrence and it is a powerful symbol. But when I look at it, that yes, okay, next week it's exact. But because of the lunar eclipse and because of the precision with which the lunar eclipse is standing across the sky from this conjunction, because it is this week that the sun and mercury meet and begin moving towards that conjunction, activating it that much more. Well, it tells me that chances are for most people out there, it is gonna be this week that feels more on the surface, that feels stronger, and is one of those weeks where uh, very likely when we think back and we think, wow, I lived through the Pluto-Saturn conjunction, it will be this week that we are thinking about more than perhaps next week. Now it is the build up to a lunar eclipse that we feel most because the energy is growing uh, in its own way at that time. And that certainly is the case now. But here's the thing, there's a lot of intensity, okay? Full moons can be quite emotionally intense. A lunar eclipse, which is what I like to call a jacked up full moon, right? That's the technical term. That isn't the technical term. Um, but these uh, full moon lunar eclipses are that much more powerful. They can be experienced as 10 times as powerful, 20 times as powerful than your average full moon. But then you add these very big players like Saturn and Pluto together across the sky and it adds that much more intensity it adds that much more awareness as to what we can do and what we can't, that much more awareness of the depths of what we feel, what's working for us and what isn't. Both Saturn and Pluto have a connection to uh, time and the limitations of time. So Saturn is thought to be representative of old age uh, and experience it. And yes, the culmination, if you will, of a life well lived. Pluto is uh, the underworld. It is after life, if you will. It is the life, death, rebirth cycle. And so while both planets have a strong sense of karma and a sense of timelessness, at the same time though, they also have their own nuances and their own distinctions. Saturn is very much about what's real and what's grounded and what's long-term. And Pluto is about really digging deep, understanding things uh, from a more profound perspective, feeling things very profoundly as well. Becoming aware of our own shadow is part of the gifts that Pluto can grant. But becoming aware of the shadow doesn't always feel good. I do think that this lunar eclipse for some people, it is going to involve these very things. Understanding power and power dynamics and structures, and at the same time, understanding where it is that we have felt hurt, where it is that we have felt that there are imbalances within certain connections that we have uh, and certain relationships that we have. 
because this lunar eclipse is taking place in the sign of cancer, some of this awareness might play out in the context of families um, and understanding power dynamics and how complex they can be within familial structures. Cancer is also the energy that has to do with what you identify as your country. It is patriotism as well. And some of that might be highlighted under energy like this, looking at where it is that, um, that maybe it's healthy, where it is that maybe it's not healthy. Uh, these are gonna be some themes that we see arising around the world. And I would say that we already are seeing some of these themes arise. I also think with this energy, when we look at it from a more personal perspective, because I'm always a lot more interested in what's happening with people personally in their hearts, uh, in their minds, in their spirits, in their souls, it's part of their journey. I do think that it is this energy that is helping us to identify what we consider home, what put that definition in place, where is it that we are ready to create structures that evolve beyond that, that actually serve us, create an understanding of home that actually brings stability? Do we feel like we already have that? Well, this is going to be a time when we are encouraged to go to our roots more deeply and to strengthen our roots. But where it is that we haven't had that or we don't feel that we have that, this is going to be a call, if you will, an invitation, if you will, to actually create structures that work for us, that bring that sense of stability and strong foundations into our life. Now, foundations aren't only about family. They're not only about uh, country and nationality. They are also connected to an inner home that we provide ourselves, an inner sense of safety that we give to ourselves. And in this way, it's very interesting because this very energy, this Cancerian energy, uh, it has such a strong archetype to, on the one hand, mother, right? And the nurturance of mother, and also connected to home in terms of your family of origin, but also in terms of the space in which you live, the physical home. But our bodies are a home, right? Our bodies are essentially the home that we carry around in this lifetime and just like a home that is a structure it will go through changes it will age if we're lucky right it'll age uh, it will uh, be something that we are developing a relationship with constantly and it's an evolving relationship at that and it is also within our own spirits that we give ourselves an innate safety. Now, whether that's the safety to truly be yourself, the safety to know that no matter what happens, you're gonna be okay. The safety to know that there is something within you that you can respect. That is a phenomenal type of security that we give ourselves. And that may very well be some of the themes that arise for a lot of us out there. You know, when I just spoke about uh, nurturing and nurturance that is covered by this archetypal energy, the archetypal energy of cancer, it isn't just uh, food. It can absolutely be food, uh, but it is about how we feel. It isn't about taking bubble baths, right? Take a bubble bath if that helps you to feel like you're practicing self-care uh, and light candles. If you wanna do that, that's great. But there's something about knowing that we can identify and honor the different emotions that we feel. That is a type of nurturance that we give to ourselves. Knowing that regardless of what our childhoods might have been, we can be a parent to our own inner child today. We have that ability to give to us what it is that we need today and to give to that child within the most innocent part of ourselves within. These are ways that we nurture ourselves as well. When we're able to identify what we need to be at peace with ourselves, it is a way of nourishing ourselves. Food isn't only like physical sustenance. It is that, absolutely. But it is also emotional sustenances. It is also uh, a sense of community uh, sustenance as well. 
And so there are lots of different ways that we nurture ourselves. We nurture ourselves on a level of mind, a level of spirit. If you want to know how you can feel at peace with yourself, right? And I know that that's an ongoing thing. I think that's the journey of a lifetime. But whenever someone comes to me, like for example, if I'm doing a reading, a life purpose reading, um, and they say, I don't feel in alignment with my life purpose, very often it is about how they feel. It's about their own emotion, their sense of not uh, being in a space of equilibrium, not being at peace with themselves. And what I always do is I always go to the moon and I like to start with the moon. I always say, look at your moon sign. What sign is it in? Act like that sign. What house is it in? Pay attention to that area of life. And it is incredible to me how just honoring your moon can balance so much else out. And so the moon right now is very active. It is not only just a lunar eclipse, but it is um, a jacked up full moon <laughs> in its own sign. It is a full moon in the sign that it rules. The moon is the ruling luminary of the sign of Cancer. And then you add to it all the intensity of Pluto, right? All that awareness of practicality and awareness of restrictions and awareness of what still needs to happen, needs to be done of Saturn. And you pull that energy in and it amplifies for all of us an awareness how in one area of life where it is that we are denying ourselves sustenance because the truth is yes you want to honor your moon sign honor your moon house honor the aspects your moon makes to other planets in the chart but in every area of life we have certain needs the entirety of the cosmos is within us. All of the signs are within us. That was the whole motivation behind writing the book, The Body and the Cosmos, was to sort of combat this idea that, you know, we are only one sign or we are only the big three, our, our sun, our moon, and our rising. But to understand how all of us, body and soul, is connected to all of the cosmos. Um, to me, it was a very powerful thing to assert, to explore and to assert. And so we get these moments when we have, for example, a lunar eclipse, jacked up full moon, right? We get these moments where we are invited to consider what our needs truly are in the area of life that this particular lunar eclipse is taking place in. So that is the area of life has to do with the house. What house is it taking place in in your chart? Um, if you're using a solar chart, then you look at it from the perspective of your sun sign. If you're using a lunar chart, you look at it from the perspective of your moon sign. And if you're using a natal chart, you look at it from the perspective of your rising sign. But these are ways in which we start to synthesize and understand more deeply how it is that the sky right now is trying to speak to us personally. So here's another very distinct and very encouraging thing about this lunar eclipse and that is that the lunar eclipse will be trine speaking in supreme harmony with neptune this i am so excited about for one it does kind of amp up water energy and i know uh, there's a lot going on in the world right now and i'm just sending love to every single part of the world uh, that needs it and it seems like a lot of the world does need it right now. Uh, I know that there uh, have been uh, flooding in Jakarta. I know that there are fires in Australia uh, and a lot of things happening in other parts of the world as well. So um, absolutely I send my absolute love and, and just whatever healing I can offer. I send it out to, to the whole world and wherever it is that there is any kind of sadness or discontent or suffering uh, taking place right now. Um, with this particular energy of the lunar eclipse, trine, uh, Neptune, that is a really good indication for water that is pleasing, uh, that brings resolution, that brings happiness. Trines tend to feel like a blessing when it is that they show up. So this is a really good indication uh, for that, for healing energy to come in 
that could be symbolized by water, but healing energy all around, emotional healing, spiritual healing, energy coming in that ultimately helps to bring a, a sense of resolution. That can be part of this lunar eclipse. The other part of this lunar eclipse is all of that earth energy standing right across it. And so that earth energy we are being asked to tap into, we're being asked to be more practical and find practical solutions to pay attention to the earth, to honor the earth. Um, this is part of what is showing up for us. On the other hand though, this is also with Saturn and uh, Pluto and all that earth energy, what I called in the monthly horoscope, the conglomerate of planets and the sign of Capricorn, there's also an awareness of power and power structures. And with this lunar eclipse, like I said, the power games can be there as well. So my hope is, as with all things in the sky, we participate in the unfolding of the universe. We participate in um, the unfolding of the cosmos. And so my true hope is with this lunar eclipse, like if you think about what an eclipse is, it is like there was this thing, there was this moon, right? Then the moon is covered in the case of a lunar eclipse, and then it appears again. And as it appears again, things look different. We see things differently. We feel things differently. It is, you know, the truth uh, in the light of the full moon and being able to look at it and feel it and understand it and admit it to ourselves what the truth is. Well, that whole process that takes place every month with the full moon becomes that much more dramatic. It becomes that much more obvious what we weren't looking at before and now we have to look at. It becomes that much more obvious where it was that we didn't want to admit the truth to ourselves, but now we have to look at the truth. And our truth in some cases is going to be highly relative. It's going to be deeply personal. With these planets standing across the sky from the lunar eclipse, very likely some of these lessons are going to play out in the context of our one-on-one -on -one connections with other people, whether they're established partnerships or whether they're uh, relationships that we have professionally or otherwise. Some of what plays out now, very likely the lessons will come forward through our interactions with others. And if you think about how, um, cancer has to do with like your nation, your country, um, nations interacting with others, what people who are in their homelands uh, feel about themselves and about the other is going uh, to be something that we are seeing people talk about right about now, expressing emotion around. But the fact that Neptune is trying this lunar eclipse, to me, that is the saving grace, that is the great blessing now. And it is ultimately this very energy that is promising healing, that is promising inspiration and faith and people who want to bring healing in, who want to help to elevate, who want to uh, bring a measure of even magic, right? We're possible. And so I'm thinking of this great tradition that exists around the world in indigenous cultures uh, and Aboriginal cultures of the rainmaker, right? How powerful and beautiful and profound that uh, shamanistic, esoteric art is to embody and to be and to practice rainmaking. This is something that a lot of people are talking about right about now, right? To summon, to consciously summon the blessing of Neptune, to invite the energy of Neptune in, uh, in a way that is deliberate and in a way that is to cultivate a blessing. That is part of what more and more people are starting to look at and talk about. And I think that that is, whether you want to just look at it from an archetypal perspective, from a symbolic perspective, right? Perhaps you're inclined to look at it as a literal thing. That's great too. But if you look at it from a symbolic perspective, it is as if our intention is gathering to look at how to consciously uh, tap into the right amount of nurturance. 
like I said, there's been like flooding and outages in uh, parts of Indonesia and Jakarta. Uh, the artist of my books is an incredibly talented person uh, named Yaves. And I always, uh, always thank him profusely whenever he does covers to my books. Uh, he really is that good. Uh, and I love his art so, so very much. Um, uh, and he lives in Jakarta. And so he was sharing this with me earlier today. And so we have like these different parts of the world that are asking ultimately for balance, right? Planets across oppositions also ask for balance as well. But it is right now that we are seeing extremes. And my hope is that by tapping into that Neptune, by tapping into our own intention, that ultimately we are part of bringing greater balance to our own communities and especially our larger community, because at the end of the day, it is all our own community. We are all connected. This world, this planet is so small. And I think that more and more as we human beings, as we evolve, we find more and more ways to demonstrate and to prove to ourselves how small it really is. Whether you're taking a plane and in a few hours you're on the other side of the planet or whether you're on the internet. I think it's incredible that we as humanity manifested the internet because that speaks to our innate understanding of our connection to each other and the sense of how we are virtually or, or mentally slash digitally interconnected. There is a web that unites us all and we really are part of a singular community. And so the more it is that we can bring healing and bring love, ultimately we end up bringing it to everybody. And that truly is my hope. Now, if all of this wasn't enough, there are big things happening in addition to the lunar eclipse. In fact, on the same day as the lunar eclipse, speaking of the internet, Uranus will go direct. So this is very profound. Um, the fact that these symbols are happening at the same time in the sky. Now it is early in the week, right around Tuesday, that uh, we are going to have a surprising connection between Mars and Uranus, and this is called a quincunx. Uh, Mars right now is in a part of the sky, is in the sign of Sagittarius. I spoke earlier about Cancer representing home and the homeland. Well, the sign of Sagittarius speaks to the foreigner and the other uh, as well. And so here you have Uranus, uh, very much about things changing very quickly and about ideas and the digital space and uh, surprising moments. Speaking with Mars uh, in a part of the sky that has to do with people that we don't always allow ourselves to identify with, or that we consider exotic or other or different than us. And they gotta find a way to get along here. There's new and surprising ways that connections are happening. And, and there has to be a way to communicate these planets when it is that the aspect is what it is, which is called a quincunx. It is as if these planets have to find a way to get along when they don't really connect otherwise, or they don't really know how. So the part of us that longs to be free and longs for change and longs for freedom, it has to find a way to take varying ethics and politics and perspectives into consideration. But of course, my hope with this energy as well is that the uh, freedom aspect is emphasized, of course, like a good Aquarius sun over here. I'm always gonna go with Uranus, uh, but, I uh, find this really interesting because there may be um, some discussion or very quick ways that people have to take this into consideration. Uh, how is it that we interact with others uh, and where is it that we have personal freedom? Where is it that we allow others to have personal freedom? That may be part of the conversation in the first part of the week, but once Uranus goes direct, even though Uranus is stationary, is standing still in the sky as we start this week, at the eclipse, officially going direct. I mean, how wise is the universe? How loving is the universe, right? 
for this to be happening simultaneously with such a powerful lunar eclipse well uranus going direct that ultimately is going to be um, some clarity some assertion and movement around uh, personal freedom and personal expression that more and more uh, people are likely to have at this time and so there will be a lot of surprises uh, taking place and allow yourself to be surprised by yourself your own feelings your own shifts your own emotions as well because it is ultimately us that we meet when we interact with the sky certainly but really when we interact with anybody it is ultimately an interaction with self another opportunity to see ourselves differently more deeply more clearly with uranus we are very quickly getting some truth about ourselves and whom it is that we are you know speaking of this mars and uranus i was uh reading a thread i didn't participate in it <laughs> i was reading a thread uh, and there were people uh, someone who said something to the effect that you know when something bad happens you just want revenge that's all that matters is getting that revenge and i thought to myself a lot of things when i read that a whole lot of things um i thought about how revenge doesn't solve anything it doesn't do anything i can understand the the impulse right but that impulse arises from a part of us that is not the more enlightened the higher qualities of what it means to be a human being that impulse to revenge no matter how uh how painful the experience it is human yes but it is lower chakra human it is uh, coming from a place within us that is ultimately primal and uh, that we are meant to ascend and I think that that's a big part of what a lot of uh, we look at spiritual masters spiritual teachers that's a lot of what they talk about um, I'm thinking about here in Mexico Guadalupe is the uh, the name for the Virgin Mary here and the Virgin Mary is a very strong archetype for this very idea Joseph Campbell actually spoke about this uh, in uh, this phenomenal series of interviews he did uh, with Bill Moyers and it was uh, during these series of interviews that Joseph Campbell actually talks about how the Virgin Mary represents this idea that we are to ascend from the lower chakras we're meant to live from heart we're meant to live from mind like that is what her whole story ultimately uh, ends up representing ends up coming down to uh, the fact that she gave birth to the divine right if we look at the mythology or the story however it is that you want to understand it I want to be incredibly respectful of course to all religious teachings all religious faiths out there but however it is that you want to understand it this idea that without engaging the lower chakras without having physical intimacy which engages the lower chakras she was able to bring forward the divine the manifestation of the divine the human physical manifestation of the divine that is part of what her story represents uh, according to Joseph Campbell and so I look at the energy as it's playing out and I read this person and, and you know what they were saying, you just want that revenge. And I thought, yeah, but we as human beings, we know that that is not where our divine self resides. When we go to that place of wanting revenge and wanting to get back at this person, you know, whether it's personal, because people do it personally as well in their own relations with other people, and it's you know really scary to be around somebody like that I will say uh, meaning that it is sad when you see somebody like that um, when people can be petty and you know you see them trying to one-up or trying to get back it is it is sad to see uh, a psychology like that to see a spirit in that place because ultimately that is a psychology and a spirit that is not living up to our potential as humanity and I think that we understand as people that we are not our best selves we are not 
whom it is that we truly are meant to be, whom it is we aspire to be, whom it is that we work towards being when we live from that place, when we live from those lower chakras, when we live from the place of wanting to get back and wanting to get revenge. And I understand that we're human, but perhaps we also like to think of ourselves as more than that, right? When we call ourselves, when we say that we are um, created in the image of the divine, which is, you know, something and along these lines that just about every spiritual tradition asserts, what that means isn't that we're, you know, physically created in that image. It means that we um, have the capacity to love. We have the capacity to ascend we have the capacity to bring forward those higher qualities that spiritual masters and teachers and mythologies and stories were trying to tell us again and again, were trying to show us again and again in cultures all over the world. There has always been an innate understanding that we are most uh, in the image of the divine when we are loving and kind and patient and when we choose not to act from a place of hurt but rather bring light and consciousness to our pain so that it no longer controls us so that we're no longer unconscious to it and it is in raising that very energy of the hold that pain has or even we could say ancestral pain with a lunar eclipse in the sign of Capricorn. That is so much about our ancestral roots, about our, our, our physical uh, connection to others, about our ancestry, our ethnicity. Where is it that we are holding that pain? And how is it now that we can raise that very energy? So we can acknowledge the pain that has been, we can acknowledge the pain and the sacrifices of our ancestors, but not have the pain be the impulse. And that really is it. We can acknowledge it, we can mourn it, we can love it, but when it controls us unconsciously to the point where we are reactive, to the point where we're looking to continue that cycle, rather than consciously choose that we are going to be more. That is a tragedy in my humble opinion. That is the great tragedy of a life not well used when it is living from those lower chakras. And it doesn't matter what you achieve in the world. It doesn't matter if you get a title and a name and you go down in history. That's great. Good for you if you want that. Well, then in my very humble opinion, me as a human being, trudging the road to happy destiny, doing the work right along with everybody else out there, uh, one experience at a time, one moment at a time, striving to become more and more uh, aware, trying to the best of my frail human ability to uh, be loving, even when it's hard, even when I can't be, um, in my very humble opinion, to not even try to align with the higher chakras, to not even be able to recognize that we are meant to ascend in some way, however small a way, but in some way, we are meant to use this lifetime to move up and to move forward. Uh, to not realize that I think is a tragedy. It's a tragedy of a life. And um, I think that we are all bright enough to shine and be celebrated. But that celebration, of course, sometimes is a very private celebration. I think any time that there's a person who chooses love, who chooses wisdom, that is ultimately the choice to not be ruled by pain. And that is something to celebrate. And that is something that gets my absolute respect and adoration as well. So what I love about this week for us, there's so much here. I feel like I just scratched the surface. I'm just getting started because it really is a very special time. 
as I said, the exact conjunction of Pluto and Saturn, that won't be exact until we get into next week, but we will feel that energy most right now. But if I had to choose what I love about this week, well, it really is that deepening understanding of what our roots are and how to bring healing to those very roots. Because it is by transforming and changing on those deep levels that from the inside, we can become more loving. And it is by connecting consciously to an energy of love and healing and magic even, that we get to embody it and we get to live it more and more. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And of course, if you wanna know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you in your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week unlimited access to special horoscopes and more, all of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Of course, the monthly horoscopes are already up, the January horoscopes, and I did talk about the lunar eclipse there as well, but I always uh, share something different and dive in more deeply for the superstars. So have a look at that if you're inspired. And the special horoscopes for the year ahead, the 2020 special horoscopes, uh, or something that a lot of people are appreciating. And thank you so much. I think it's my best-selling special horoscope so far. And just thank you. I appreciate your trust so very much. So you can get the 2020 horoscope now. The monthly horoscopes had previews for your sign, so you can have a look at that. Uh, previews are on my Instagram account also. And there is the Jupiter special horoscope. There is the decade ahead horoscope. So there's lots uh, of ways in which to dive into the period ahead for you in your sign. I mentioned earlier the amazing artist of my books, uh, The Body and the Cosmos, right here. You can get it now on Amazon. It's in ebook format, it's in print format. Uh, thank you to all the amazing feedback it's been getting. Thank you to everybody who got advanced sales and got free gifts as a result. Um, you can now get a signed copy on my website. And if you purchase the signed copy, it does come uh, with the pre-recorded meditations that are in the book uh, as well. But as I said, if it is that you just want the book, have a look at um, Amazon and wherever books are sold uh, and you can get it uh, directly from them. When you buy the book from me, you know you're gonna get it from me. <laughs> uh, but if it is that you get it, from another bookseller, uh, then you go to them, they'll take care of everything from the beginning to the end to make sure that you uh, get a copy of this book, regardless how you get it. Thank you so, so very much for making it a number one new release in New Age Astrology. That really meant so much to me. And um, if you have purchased the book, you've read the book, please leave your positive comment on the Amazon site. That would be very, very appreciated as well. And my next book, Prayers to the Sky, also the same artist did that cover. This is not the same uh, cover. This was a draft that I wanted to see what the book looks like inside. Um, but yeah, this is the book. This is the next book, Prayers to the Sky. I'll have advanced uh, copies available at some point, but for now, this weekend, advanced sales are continuing and they will end on Sunday. So literally as we start this weekend, just got a couple more days or a couple more hours from the time that this is publishing to secure uh, your copy of Prayers to the Sky to know and to love the astrological planets more deeply. So basically what the body and the cosmos did for the signs, it is um, Prayers to the Sky that will do for the planets. And it is essentially looking at uh, forging a more personal connection to each planet. So I talk, uh, I tell stories and I talk a little bit about the myths and what we know about the character of the planet so that you can really connect and feel the energy. And then I give you a list of correspondences and uh, I, prayers, prayers that I wrote. Um, and so this was also something that was very much a dream of mine to have a book of prayers and it is ultimately 
prayers and affirmations that you're making to yourself because it is you that has all of the planets within you and I feel very strongly that it is essentially us honoring our own divinity the planets are a reflection of a symbol of ultimately what is divine and sacred energy and so my hope with prayers to the sky is to remind you of uh, how varied and complex you are and how varied and complex uh, divine energy is as you express it as you embody it and as you live it so that is the intention to the book again i hope you absolutely love it so it's just a few more hours from the time that this is publishing to get your advanced copy and again the book will be published in march I'm trying to pin down the exact publication date because as you know if you watched the 2020 uh, horoscope that i did on youtube it is a very complex sky <laughs> this year in 2020 so trying to figure out that right date right time uh, can be a little tricky when you got so many retrogrades in 2020 but it will be on uh, online at booksellers everywhere as well advanced copies this weekend after that wait till march and uh, get it at booksellers and i'll be here to talk about it every step of the way and thank you thank you for your love your trust your support for supporting my books i appreciate it so much thank you now finally events i've been getting a lot of amazing feedback uh, and excitement about my upcoming event uh, with kaipacha and other world renowned big dog astrologers uh, that are going to be joining me in costa rica in may uh, you would be very welcome to join us it is kaipacha's event he's taking care of everything i was invited to participate and I am really looking forward to this. I really think it'll be very special. Um, it is Astrology Rising, Costa Rica.com, and some of my very favorite astrologers and very favorite people are part of this event. So Rick Levine, you all know I love Rick Levine. He's an amazing uh, person. He's, uh, he's just an inspiration and he's fun. He is a fun dude. Rick Levine is gonna be there. Uh, Maurice Fernandez that you've seen on my channel, uh, spiritual, amazing, evolutionary astrologer is gonna be there. There's quite a few evolutionary astrologers as well that are gonna be a part of this, which means that essentially, to use my language, these are people who use astrology to align with greater love and greater wisdom. So you know you're gonna get that experience. Of course, Kaipacha is there, Soul Jenison is there, uh, Christina Claudel, Julia uh, Simas, and we have Ari Moshe and Timothy Holleran. I hope I got everybody there. Incredible speakers. We're going to have a lot of fun together in Costa Rica. And Kaipacha really has it all down. Like he is so organized. It's got a wonderful schedule. All you need to do once you register, other than that, book your plane ticket, show up at Costa Rica, and he takes care of everything else. He will get you picked up at the airport, bring you to the resort. We're gonna have the entire resort to ourselves. There's gonna be something like 200 people all together there, uh, and the entire resort to ourselves, all the food, all the drinks, everything covered, and you just enjoy yourself and learn astrology and get to be part of yoga and drumming and uh, ceremony and all kinds of amazing, uh, immersive experience so I'm really looking forward to it I will be participating uh, with all of you May is going to be a very busy month I'll talk about that in just a second but if you can't wait till May to see me <laughs> I appreciate that I will be in Florida next weekend can you believe it it's finally here I've been talking to you guys about this for a while I will be in Florida uh, this coming Saturday January 11 I will have a free book launch party that is going to take place to celebrate the launch of the body and the cosmos that's happening at 9 30 a.m i'm not a morning person but i am going to be there with cupcakes for everybody again it's free to attend i'll have books for sale i'll be uh doing selfies giving hugs it'll be a lot of fun we'll be there together and then at 10 30 uh the ncgr group is hosting me to do uh, a talk 
in the morning from Earth to Air, and then in the afternoon to do a workshop on past lives in the astrology chart. So whether you stay for one uh, or all of it, or you know you just come for the book signing in the morning and the free cupcakes, all of that is great. Uh, it would be very lovely to see friends and fans in Florida. Really looking forward to it. The following day, I am jumping on a boat. <laughs> I'm jumping on the cruise, the very first cruise I've ever been on. There will be some 70 like-minded souls joining us. Literally, people still connecting with us to join the cruise. And uh, Patricia Bell, who is the organizer of the cruise, she literally was like, if they're running to the ship and they got their ticket, they've signed up for it, they got their seminar, everything's set, they're running up to the ship just before it's pulling away, we will take you, we will accept you. So if it is that you really are very last minute and you really want to join us on this cruise, you would be very welcome. Get in touch with us today, like right away, because there literally is just a few days uh, to join us on board. And I'll be doing like at least one of the horoscope videos. I will do like the YouTube videos. I'll probably do a shorter one, but it'll be on the boat. So you'll get to see the boat uh, with me. And I'll be doing lots of stories and things on Instagram. So if you wanna see how the trip is going, I got like the souped up uh, internet package. So you'll get to see that if you join me uh, on on Instagram and check out my Instagram stories every day there. It'll be a lot of fun as well. I have a very big event coming up in New York City. I haven't been to New York City in like 20 years. It'll be very, very exciting uh, to be there. And I'm so honored to be asked to be there by Gotham Astrology. And I will be speaking at the New York Theosophical Society, a hugely historical and important organization. Uh, I am floored, I am excited, I am grateful, I'll tell you, I'm so grateful uh, to have this milestone moment uh, to be speaking there, to be in New York. It'll be a lot of fun. So I'll be doing a fun and lively talk uh, on the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction in December and what it means for you and your chart. Uh, I know that the early bird tickets are almost sold out at this point. Early bird tickets are only $20. They are expected to completely sell out. Uh, there are going to be a few regular price tickets available in advance and uh, possibly at the door if all tickets uh, don't sell out, if we end up at capacity. We are expected to be at capacity. Thank you, New York, for all the love. Um, but ticket sales have been much better than expected. So thank you. Thank you so much. And if you're in uh, the tri-state area, as it's called, uh, it would be lovely to meet you in uh, my talk in New York City, uh, which is January the 21st, which is a Tuesday. So that'll be a lot of fun as well. Other events uh, include in March, I will be in Istanbul. In April, I will be in Bangkok, Thailand. Um, in May, I will be in Costa Rica, as I said, but then I will be in Toronto with Astrology Toronto in the middle of the month. I'll be at the NORWAC conference in Seattle, uh, Memorial Day weekend, and then I'll be in Las Vegas the last week of May uh, with the NCGR Stargazers Group of Las Vegas. So whew, I'll be on a bit of a world tour. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, but literally I'm planning, like I'm trying to take a little bit of break between, like after uh, Bangkok, I'm gonna go to Jakarta to see Yavis and to see another friend of mine who I've known for like 20 years uh, who moved there, learned the language, loves it there. Uh, so I'll go there just for a little bit. And then I'm gonna try to go right back to Cancun so that I can hang out with Biggie for a few weeks before headed to Costa Rica. So let's see how it works out. I know that he'll be fine. He's well taken care of, well loved uh, in Mexico, but it's me, it's me that's gonna miss him, right? And then in September, I'll be in Colorado. So all of that off the top of my head, these are the events uh, that are coming up. Online events include Starstruck. So Starstruck, you can still get all 20 talks for one very, very low price. Um, it was so much fun, such a highlight for me talking to Ophi of Astro Twins. That was a whole lot of fun to do together. Um, and she's done that with other amazing world-renowned astrologers. You can download all the talks, plus get all kinds of free gifts as well. Uh, if you sign up astrostyle.com slash Nadia, 
Uh, it'll take you right to the page to give you all that information. And Synchronicity University is coming up as well. Uh, Synchronicity University classes start like literally after my New York events, I will go home to Toronto and jump right in and do uh, the first of the next session, the winter session of Synchronicity University starts with a class on Venus in the astrology chart. And then other classes over the winter session in February and into March are going to include Pluto uh, in aspect to planets and Jupiter in aspect, that's the third, and then uh, chart rulerships and lunar mansions. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. We will navigate the winter together, learning astrology every Saturday. Uh, if you can't join us live, that's okay. You get the download and I look forward to meeting you in class. Finally, my very big holiday raffle is almost done. It's gonna be done in the next couple of days. Uh, and thank you so much to everybody who's bought raffle tickets, everyone who's donated, the amazingly talented people who've donated their time, their consultations. Uh, there are some, I think almost 60 prizes at this point. And I just appreciate each and every one of you so much. All the money raised and more is going to go to um, an organization that I absolutely love called bestfriends.org. So we've extended the holiday raffle into January, uh, right to January 7, I believe. January 7 in the Latin world is uh, considered the astrologer's day because it's the day of the three kings, which were the three wise men who were astrologers. So uh, in the Latin world, it's celebrated by astrologers. And um, so I thought that that would be fitting. We wanted to extend it so that everyone who donated got a chance to be promoted, who donated prizes, and uh, so that we could make sure to raise as much money as possible. As I said, I will donate according to how many tickets are sold, meaning that I'm gonna cover all the PayPal fees, uh, and a little bit more as well. And so I'll be announcing all of that and I'll have the receipt and everything for you guys, uh, hopefully next week uh, for the video that I do next week. And, um, and thank you, like it just means so much to me uh, that you guys have been giving, you guys have been incredibly generous. You've been reaching out to others to give as well. And really anything you give, like I said, it all will go to charity and it'll all be documented as well, so you'll get to see it. And um, this is a charity very near and dear to my heart because what they do is they rehabilitate and where possible rehome uh, animals who have been, um, who have suffered, who have suffered abuse, who have uh, suffered environmental factors, and they welcome all kinds of animals as well, pets and wild animals and, um, I think their work is incredibly important because that is putting healing in the world right there. That sense of not giving up, that sense of knowing that no matter what you've been through, you can love again. That conviction is rooted in love. And I think that whenever I see love affirmed in the world, I, I, feel, I feel grateful. I feel grateful to those who are part of putting love and wisdom in the world. So thank you. Thank you for being here for uh, me to, in my own unique way, do that as well. And of course, uh, for you being here, for me to be some part of your sacred journey. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I am going to be on the road starting this week. And I look forward to meeting you out there while I'm on the road. And uh, it's going to be fun. And it's going to be a great, great week. Enjoy.